today we are focusing on mentor relevant stakeholders it's a task 13 of your pmp exam content outline if you are watching this session first time then i give a little introduction to pmp exam content outline and if you are our regular uh, uh, visitor then you know what it, this whole thing means from a pmp pmi perspective the pmp exam is based on exam content outline and the exam content outline is prepared by PMI based on what they believe, based on their periodic research, the things the project manager is expected to do in the industry. So the exam content outline have various kind of tasks that this is, should be done, this should be done, this should be done. And then the PMB exam test you on those tasks by way of putting multiple choice or different type of questions. Now, the whole content outline is divided into three areas. They call it domain, people, process, and business. And each has set of tasks. People has a 14, process has 17, and business has four. We have already covered four business tasks. We have already covered four tasks from people domain. And today we are covering our fifth task, but the task number 13, we are not going in exact sequence. We are picking up task number 13 today. If you want to see the previous task related conversation, you can feel free to check our uh, previous videos which are available on YouTube as well as in LinkedIn space. So the task 13, which is coming under people domain, the people domain overall gives us 42% uh, uh, marks and uh, 14 tasks are there. So one of that task is focusing on mentoring, mentoring relevant stakeholders, allocate time to mentoring, and recognize and act on mentoring opportunity. So as a project manager, you should do mentoring. Now, the previous week we spoke about training and now this time we are talking about mentoring. Both of these tasks are basically focusing on that project manager should work in order to develop good kind of skills uh, in their team members, the technical competency and the, the emotional intelligence competency so that the team members can really perform well and can produce project objective. So in order to get project objective met as a project manager, I need to keep developing people. And we spoke about some of the assumption in our previous session. I recommend it should be looked at because they set the right mindset, which is a pure belief of a project manager that developing people is the key to success. I don't have any shortcut. I need to keep investing my time and energy in developing people. So that's a basic assumption we are working with. Now, before I go into this task, as you see, it's a small task. Let's have a clarity about the difference between term mentoring, training and coaching. Many times these terms are used interchangeably as well. And maybe in the question also, we need to be a little careful what is the real meaning of it because some of the alternative may change based on what is done. Now, in general, all these three things help us in helping individuals, teams, stakeholders in improving their performance. They are kind of different kind of intervention. I, I have a set of group, I have a people and I need to do something so that their performance, their skills, their attitude improves. So training is, is a type of intervention where a trainer goes with a specific agenda, specific set of knowledge, it has a short term focus. It has a clear start time and end, end time. The training is expected to be well organized. The agenda should be uh, given in the advance. So the content and the focus is pretty well understood. And the person may conduct workshop of, of some time on job training as well, but facilitate the overall a, a type of knowledge and some amount of skill development. So training is all about a communicating set of ideas, knowledge, theory, so the participants understands them and that's the objective of, of training. Whereas a mentoring is little long-term relationship. It is a focus on providing guidance, experience sharing, nurturing the person related to a particular domain area. So I might be mentoring someone on the technology or a say engineering activities. I keep guiding them how to do the things. Usually if you are a senior leader, team leader, and you have a team member, the team leaders are expected to keep mentoring team members so the team members can do better problem solving, they can identify the issues faster, and they can also produce better performance for themselves as well as for the team. So mentoring, it is not a very defined agenda. It is not like today I want to teach this thing to my team member. I don't have any clear intention. 
And whenever my dream team member gets stuck on something, they come to me, I provide one-on-one -on -one meeting, I share experience, I provide advising. So mentoring is about continuous investment in the mentee, the other guy, by way of sharing expertise, giving them very specific instructions or advices and helping the mentee, the receiving person to develop a particular skill or competency by applying the knowledge in a multiple uh, uh, time. So they, they really develop a muscle so that they can do the things in a better way. So training might be a starting point. Say, I don't know anything about a particular technology. I first start with getting trained in it. Then I start doing things and I have a mentor who can support me if I have it as a project manager, I can provide that mentor to my team members who can help them so that they can really develop proficiency in that particular competency area. So that's a mentoring part of it, which is focus here. Now, sometimes we also see a word coaching, though in our PMP exam content outline, we don't have a very specific word coming as coaching. But in general, in the questions, you can see this word. Coaching is, is mean, mostly misunderstood and always get confused with mentoring. But there is a, a specific difference in the idea of coaching. The coach is expected to create self-awareness and help the individual to find their own answers. So in the case of mentoring, the mentor provide the answer. In case of coaching, the coach facilitate thought process by way of asking powerful question, by way of listening to the problem, by way of making the person reflect on their assumption so that person can discover their own solutions and actions. It can be short term, it could be long term. You, the coach doesn't have to be expert in that particular area because coach is not sharing experience. Coach is not advising the person. Coach is more or less a, a thinking facilitator. The, the coach assumes the person who is coming to them has all the skills and they are helping them to discover the hidden assumptions, hidden areas in the, in the coach's mind, which can help the coach to find out the right uh, questions and the right answers for their problem. So you can say that if the person is already skilled, the person is, is, is knowing their job well, but they are, they are blocked because of their attitude of solving the problem or they have some habit of doing things in a wrong way and they want to change their habit, they want to improve their attitude on, on about the work, that time the coaching can help. It is not like you don't have to give a, a, a specific skill or knowledge. It is just that you need to help the person to see their own pattern and improve on that. So that's a coaching part of it. Now, as a project manager, me may also become a trainer, mentor and coach yeah, as an individual myself. And I am expected to provide training and mentoring coaching in all the areas to my team member by way of working with other mentors, trainers and coach. So I need to do both the things. I myself for a PMP exam perspective can train mentor and coach people when it comes to project management related topics. So I can say that how to handle things, how to manage conflicts, how to give feedback to each other, how to work using agile, how to put the things into issue log or how to have a proper uh, reporting. All those things I can mentor, I can train. So whenever you see these kind of things, you can always assume the project manager can also train and mentor in the project management space. When you deal with senior stakeholders, someone who is a product manager, who is a senior stakeholder, they know about their domain well, and they are finding some difficulty in interacting with the team members and you are not expert there, then usually you try to take coaching stance because we, as a PMP exam, we are not expecting that you have an expertise in other than project management areas to mentor and train. In the other areas, you can probably listen to the stakeholder, ask them right question, and you can probably coach them. So we need to understand that expertise needed for training mentoring. The training is a short term thing. The mentoring is a long term thing. And coaching is more like a, a, a say emotional, intelligent listening and asking powerful question so that it helps the other person to reflect better. Yeah. So this is like a basic thing. Now, somebody will say why I'm doing it. Going back to our previous conversation, which we did in our previous session, if some of you are, are part of it. So we have a stakeholders and we understand from a PMI perspective, it includes project team and other stakeholder, user, customers, sponsors and all. There is a cash box uh, which gives a nice uh, uh, kind of, of presentation that in order to improve somebody's performance, yeah, you need to work on four areas, knowledge, skills, 
attitudes and habits just giving a knowledge of doing how to code not necessarily make someone good coder just having skill to code but the person is not allocating right time person is casual about it not taking a systematic approach may not also make the person good coder so i need to have a knowledge i need to have a skill skill is a, a ability to apply the knowledge in a real time situation i need to have a competency and then i need to have a right attitude and the attitude comes by default uh, in me habit so i have a good habits which produce a better results so as per this cash box any individual's performance are dependent on these four areas now why should i worry as a project manager because i need to develop all these four areas in my team members <clears throat> so i can say that yes i do it i probably focus on knowledge by way of facilitating training to my people i focus on mentoring by in order to develop skills also at some level improving attitude but attitude and habit majorly might be triggered with the help of coaching intervention so the person has uh, the basic assumption is the person has a training and skills the knowledge and skills now i need to just improve habits and attitudes i can do a coaching kind of intervention so again related to previous content it is all about i need to learn mentoring training and coaching all are three type of intervention and as a project manager i need to apply appropriate intervention whenever needed so this is little theory before we go to a specific task now this specific task can be summarized in just one slide it is basically focusing on that i need to recognize mentoring opportunities now you can also say it's, it could be a training and and coaching also though the task is basically about mentoring i need to recognize what kind of intervention and what kind of need my team member has i need to continuously recognize and then i need to plan it and then execute it and then keep uh, checking it and repeating this loop uh, so that's what i need to do as a project manager now here i am giving some of the examples which may come from other tasks and other areas which relate here so as a project manager i need to support team members performance i need to support teams so when i am looking at someone someone's performance we are looking what is expected from them what what they are doing right now i can recognize a need for training and mentoring when i am working with a team and the, it is going through a, a, a development stage maybe it's a storming stage and i want to take it a norming stage or i see that there is a lack of collaboration when i check with the team i can also recognize mentoring and training opportunity when i am working with a team when i am working with the stakeholders stakeholders other than team yeah the supporting change so it's like i have a product and the product will go into the market or in the in the customer base and there are customers who are expected to use it there are users who are expected to use it and now i need to mentor and train them by way of understanding what is their current knowledge and skills and attitude towards things and what is a desired knowledge skills and attitude we need in order to move to a new way of working so as a project manager i need to recognize if our deliverable whatever deliverable we are producing incrementally requires a managing of the change or or influencing people to come to the new way of working then also i need to recognize mentoring and training opportunity i need to support overall conversation and engagement while doing informal or formal conversation we may recognize that there is a mentoring or training opportunity so continuously keep looking at the ideas the required environmental changes which may bring some kind of new competency needed in the individuals or based on what we expect from our stakeholder like moving from one way of working to another we may require supporting change kind of recognition of mentoring opportunities as well so i keep doing that now plan perspective you can have again there is no very strict uh, uh, guideline in the in the pmp exam perspective we can do formal mentoring plan you can have a formal coaching plan you can say training plan mentoring plan coaching plan which may talk about uh, formally recognizing mentors and mentees having some formal cadence or interaction uh, schedule that every week you need to talk to each other and provide advices and as some mechanism of collecting feedback at the end of a month so that could be a one of the possible way of coming up with a formal mentoring process there could be informal mentoring process as well where we have some mentors and team leaders identified whenever people get stuck they can go to them and seek advices and in general the informal mentoring process usually exist i i won't say always usually exist in various teams whenever you get stuck you go somewhere and you take advices so i can also have some people recognized in the areas of subject you know subject matter experts and we can create people 
uh, the environment that this is the these are the one who can be a go to person sometimes these go to person could be your stakeholders also so say we have a compliance requirement we have a compliance related stakeholder not a direct team member but we can recognize that person as a mentor and whenever we have an issue in a team member we have a working agreement with the person and we can go and take advice from them we can also plan job shadowing especially with the stakeholders and team members it may also be a important tool when you are supporting change where someone is doing the work and other person is with them and they can help them in in observing what they are doing and correcting them if they are uh, not doing it it rightly uh, it may be a little bit of overlap of training and mentoring there because it might be a very specific duration activity but some amount of training and mentoring overlap keeps happening and that can develop the the competency while you are doing supporting the change you can also support the help desk you end up setting up the knowledge base help desk place where people can go for seeking advice and they can call for seeking advice whenever they get stuck in a particular area you can also plan group mentoring session so it is not always a one on one mentoring uh, maybe you bring uh, people together and where some ex some experienced people are expected to share their experience uh, uh, they can demonstrate a particular skill for example you want to educate someone a group that how to take customer call you can bring the 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 people they can sit uh, uh, in, in a group and the person who is mentoring them uh, performs a customer call in front of them and then he or she explains what he did uh, and uh, ask them what are their advices for various situations and by way of handling or or showing them them a real time demo and helping them in 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 taking their feedback in between i am mentoring on a on a how to handle calls well as a group also so it could be a group mentoring activity as well which may look like a training but the idea is very not very defined agenda that's the difference and it is more about sharing the experience rather than just focusing on on a, a theory or a or a topic so these kind of activities can be planned and then you do it yeah, so that's the simple thing so you do one on one mentoring you do group mentoring uh, those things you do uh, another thing when you are acting is that as a project manager we don't do anything without feedback so we must have a feedback to understand how our mentoring activities are helping us so we can talk about the lesson learned meeting or a retrospective meeting we can look at and identify mentoring needs and those meetings can also work as an opportunity to do a mentoring and they can also help us in improving our mentoring uh, or coaching activities the another question may come how do we measure the effectiveness of a mentoring so actually as we discuss about training effectiveness also improvement in the performance producing right deliverable making the impact for our business delivery value delivery is the best way of measuring that if if i see that option i choose that if i don't have that then i can also go for some subjective effectiveness assessment where i may ask all the mentees that how well you got uh, treated how well you got feedback what do you think about the assistance you got from mentor so we can have a periodic subjective assessment and based on that we can identify do we need to schedule more mentoring session or we can say that this is not needed any more yeah so that could be uh, another way of measuring the effectiveness of mentoring we do need to facilitate stakeholder and team interaction that's a, another uh, informal mentoring process where you can help the people to participate in various milestone reviews in various demos which can create a informal connect between stakeholders and the team and that can also work as a mentoring opportunity so super high level it's a small uh, a topic i think you can probably end up seeing two three questions out of it because it's a mentoring topic you may not be able to recognize question very clearly because the mentoring and the previous topic training may may have a mix more both these topics coming together should give you around four to uh, eight question exactly we can't predict because pmi is only giving us domain wise grouping rather than task wise grouping but these are important questions and the topic for your pmp exam uh, in, like uh, usually the traditional pmp content may not get into the details of mentoring training in in at that extent but you understand in the new project management people development is a focus area and you need to focus on these things so this is all about the mentoring training part